All right, we're going to expose the fraud that medical expenses cost the vast majority of bankruptcies here. And yes, I use the term fraud because it is what it is. Uh, when you see how the genesis of this came into being, who the people were, and we'll show you the evidence that shows exactly how fraudulent it was. Um, I mean, you can take it for yourself, do whatever you want, it's fine. But uh, it's, it's just, again... <sighs> Was it statistics? You can uh, you torture the statistics enough, and they'll make uh, they'll confess anything. And uh, statistics don't lie. There's another saying about statistics don't lie, but uh, I don't know, whatever. Liars use statistics, something like that. And uh, especially now that we're using the democratic debates that started last night, and you know, national health care for all, Medicare for all, this whole thing is just uh, it's based on a fraud. No other way around that. And it's uh, it actually frustrates me how many people fall for this. To be perfectly honest with you. Um, it's the headline media, the propaganda of that media, uh, with their headlines uh, that make people without who are essentially don't read the art, the article. And we know when I was in journalism class back in 1987 and 1988, when I was the uh, sports editor for our high school newspaper, even back then, my my guy, my teacher said, "Look, people don't read the articles; they read the headline and the first paragraph. That's it. And then after that, their 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 minds are made up. Just look at what Facebook is; it's propaganda." you know, sharing headlines, but no one reads the article. So, all right, let's dive into this. So first, we're going to go to Gail Harriet's uh, article. This is back in 2006 uh, from, uh, I forgot what this is from. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, yeah, SSRN, um, Social Science Research Network, I think. I can't remember. But anyway, uh, Gail Harriet, in this one, she wrote it, professor of law at University of San Diego, uh, she's now on the U.S. Commission for Civil Rights. All right, so uh, Gail, she is a frequent contributor to uh, Instapundent, uh, which is run by a law professor at the University of Tennessee. Uh, if you want to read good quality info, uh, instapundent.com and then powerlineblog.com are where you should go. These are uh, conservative-minded libertarians for the most part. Powerline is probably more conservative. Uh, Instapundent is more libertarian. Uh, for some reason, the law professors, uh, they dive deep in a lot of this stuff and, and look beyond the headlines and, and give articles that really get your noggin thinking. I love it. Um, it's, it's fantastic. So uh, Gail had written this back in 2006, and we're just going to read the first part of it. Um, introduction. In the early 2005, a barrage of media publicity accompanied Health Affairs publication of illness and injury as contributor to bankruptcy. Just a few weeks before the U.S. Senate was scheduled to take up bankruptcy reform legislation. Headlines like, Medical Bills Blamed in Half of Bankruptcies and Medical Bills Caused About Half of Bankruptcies, Study Finds, ran in major newspapers all across the country. For a while, the publicity made bankruptcy policy seem almost glamorous. Huh. It's almost like client change policies, almost glamorous, huh? The problem with these headlines is that they were false. The study made no finding that medical bills were involved in half the bankruptcies, nor did it find that illness or injury, at least in these terms that are ordinarily used, were major or even minor contributors to half of all bankruptcies. Stripped of this rhetorical excess, the study's actual findings were far more modest, to the point that the media might have not been interested at all if they understood it better, but asking the media to understand it is like, I just, it's just, you know, they don't care. They just want the headlines. In fact, remember Ben Rhodes, he was a, one of Obama's guys. He said that explicitly the media were basically young kids who've done nothing else but study politics and cover politics. They will do what they're told. That's Ben Rhodes from Obama. He said it. He knew. He knew. He just had to give them the right lead and they would fall along just like good little advocates of uh, of whatever propaganda you wanted. Now, they won't do the same for Trump because, you know, they grew up through journalism school at Columbia and whatnot, and they're, they're, they're leaning a direction for sure. But Ben Rose knew how to lead these people. Uh, ordinarily, of course, it would be it would be a mistake to hold the study's authors responsible for errors made in the media about his meaning. Such misunderstandings are common even when the authors exercise abundant caution. But in this case, the authors should have been more careful. Regardless of their intention, they gave the media reason to believe that the study concerned bankruptcies caused by the crush of medical bills, which, despite the media's readiness to believe it, was simply not true. The press release accompanying the issue provided by Physicians for a National Health Program. Huh, Physicians for a National Health Program. Do they have a, an interest in changing the debate? Hmm. 
an organization co-founded by the lead author and one of the co-authors stated in his title, Harvard Study. See, the look, oh man, so Harvard Study. Who's going to question Harvard professors? Oh, they know everything. This is the appeals to authority. And I hear this a lot. In fact, I saw on my man Tim Poole the other day and it took me off. He's like, I'll, I'll defer to what the professor says. Like, no, 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 no. Just because they have a... A uh, formal way to pedigree doesn't mean they know everything and you don't. You just like bow down to them. I say, no, just because they're from Harvard doesn't mean you just say, okay, I, I'm out of the debate. It's nuts. Uh, uh, Harvard study, half of U.S. bankruptcies caused by medical bills. So that was in the title. That was that wasn't media being ignorant. It was, but it's also the fact that the st study from Harvard was telling them too. Similarly, the announcement of the study by Harvard Law School, at which another of the study's co-authors is a faculty member, hmm. the announcement of the study by Harvard Law School, at which another of the study's co-authors is a faculty member, misreported that in nearly that nearly half of all Americans who file for bankruptcy do so because of medical expenses. So we got two guys, one guy and a lady, who are uh, proponents of national health care. Uh, with their own title that half of U.S. bankruptcies caused by medical bills. Then we have a author uh, through Harvard Law School, but she ring a bell, we'll talk about her in just a second, who said nearly half of all Americans who file for bankruptcy do for medical expenses. But again, she's Harvard. We're not going to question her. And who was that Harvard Law School professor? You want to take a guess? Co-author Elizabeth Warren. <sighs> if the author's left responsibility for the accuracy of their announcements to the persons unfamiliar with the study, they made a mistake. Moreover, their own comments sometimes pointed journalists in the wrong direction. In commenting to the media, the author, David Himmelstein, who I, I've shared this before, it's a Marxist. See, there's, read up Himmelstein and you'll find a Marxist response to health care. Our study is frightening, says Himmelstein. Too often, private health insurance is an umbrella that just melts in the rain. And of course, he's advocating for national health care. Elizabeth Warren stated in the Harvard Law School announcement that the study uh, proved a broken healthcare finance system is bankrupting middle class America. Their emphasis on healthcare financing encouraged journalists to believe that the study focused on bankruptcies that were indeed the result of a broken healthcare st study. Their dramatic language suggested that the study had uncovered something on the topic that should frighten or shock the average American. That's exactly what they're trying to do trying to frighten or shock the average American that you're only one illness, a sneeze away from going bankruptcies because more than half of bankruptcies are caused by health care. <sighs> Should the media also share the blame for the study, the vast amount of information that's circulated by the study? Yes, of course. Perhaps even a greater share of the blame. But, I mean, blame the media all you want. In this case, you got to blame the sources, Harvard and their stupid professors who are writing crappy stuff because they want to change the debate. And it worked magically because the media falls so kind of sinker. But I fall, I blame us, us, the consumers. Why? Because we're the ones who allow this crap. We're the ones who sit there and say, oh, yeah, okay. The headline is us who are allowing us to be the ignorance to, to permeate and change the nature of everything that's going on around us. It's us. I don't want to be involved in politics. I had a guy comment me on the other day on a YouTube channel. Too much politics. About, I don't know about my take on Social Security or his own uh, take that politics says he doesn't want to get involved in politics. I don't know. But I said, dude, you might not like politics, but politics likes you. It will ever be. It, everything you do is political. Everything. So to be ignorant of it because you don't want to engage in that dirty issue of politics it doesn't change the fact that everything you do is political. But very few journalists engage in such careful readings. Instead, as a, as a result of inaccuracies and excessive rhetoric, the public debate on bankruptcy reform was compromised. Yep. All right, let's uh, talk. I'm going to go down here for just a second. From their own study here, uh, this is part three of uh, Gail's article here. Only 28.3% of debtors, huh, debtors cited illness or injury among the reasons for their bankruptcy. Well, a study takes a position that 54.5% of all bankruptcies have a medical cause and 46.2% of all bankruptcies have a major medical cause, it's important to note that only 28% of all debtors questioned for the study cited illness or injury as a reason for their own bankruptcies. And even that figure is bloated. The authors gave debtors an extensive list of possible reasons for their bankruptcy and encouraged them to check all those that apply. Among the reasons were job problems, illness or injury, Divorce, family breakup, may lose home, eviction or foreclosure, victor or fraud, 
addic- addition of a family member, gambling, trouble in managing money, uh, credit card debt out of control, all these things. The 28.3% figure was obtained from the results of this question. Now watch this. Any bankruptcy, any bankruptcy of a debtor who cited illness or injury of self or family member was counted as having a major medical cause, regardless of how many other reasons were cited for that debt. Any of them. So of these 16, credit card out of control, by the way, employer's business failed. If they cited number two, illness or injury, they were considered having medical bankruptcy. The study fails to make this clear. Although it states that some debtors cited more than one medical contributor, it fails to make clear that some debtors no doubt checked both medical and non-medical reasons for their bankruptcy. Some may have even checked all 16. Such bankruptcies were nevertheless recorded as having major medical cause. Uh, a uh, A compulsive gambler or shopper who optimistically hoped that he could pay off his debts by working evenings as a waiter might in good faith answer that illness or injury was a reason for his bankruptcy if he sprains his ankles and must therefore give up his evening job. But he is unlikely to regard that illness or injury as a primary cause for his predicament. Uh, not only that, but it's, uh, we know when, when you're citing bankruptcy, no one's going to say I did it because I was impulsive. No one's going to. All right. So let's, I got other things I want to read here and I'll, I'll probably break this up into four because I think it's important to make these in, in chunk size that you can, uh, you can, li- you can read, uh, or, or consume a one by one. So I'll read these other three here. This is from 2006 from Gail Harriet, uh, where she just debunked the Elizabeth Warren who then went on to, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> You know, look, I guess she's on the rise in the Democratic primaries now. It's crazy. So you think about it, this propelled her. I mean, her fakery on being an American Indian, first and foremost, was nuts because she literally took work away from real American Indians. And that, that right there should disqualify her without question. I mean, she's it's, it's fake, fake. She knows it. And yet, for some reason, because she's left, the left doesn't. Uh, it's, it's the note from being blackface. It's crazy. I, I don't get why this a fiction. A, 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 affection for this lady when she's a faker and she took real jobs away from people who were to completely held back the two people in this world who two groups that should have some kind of you can't touch them are the blacks from america and then american indians everyone else is should be thrown in there's no people of color stuff it should all be if we're going to focus on one aspect of whatever making it right it should be black americans and uh, american indians I don't know what, look, I'm not for reparations. I don't know. But I mean, my goodness, when you start faking as a white person that you're a black, like Rachel Dalzell or an American Indian like Elizabeth Warren, you are, you are taking away from someone whose actually heritage was held back because of your own people. It's nuts. And yet, for some reason, people just, man, whatever. So then she was propelled to become the chief of the CP, whatever, the uh, Consumers Financial Protection Board, CFPB. Then she sprung board that from Senator all based on fraud. All, I, all based on fraud. And now she looks like she's uh, overtaken Bernie as the left wing's candidate. I, I just, I don't understand. But, all right, well, this might be too much politics. Guess what, man? Politics, literally everything you do is political. Uh, uh, Dershowitz, Alan Dershowitz, I think, wrote this book, Three Felonies a Day. You literally, just by being you, are committing three felonies a day. So if you don't like politics, like I said, it likes you and they can come get you anytime they want because you're committing three felonies a day. But whatever it is you're doing, whatever it is you're doing, and that's Dershowitz, not some right wing rabble rouser. All right. Stay tuned. I can do a couple more on this exact same stuff. There's a couple of articles I think you'll find interesting.